What's up, everybody? OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy here, and uh, another edition of The Mikey Show. Whew, been so busy um, building rigs that I just can't even pay attention to the channel really anymore. I want to show you something to prove my point. A lot of these things I tell you about years ago, like no preamp, certain things like that, very hard for people to stomach at first. Then years later, they realize, wow, Mikey really was right about that. He's maybe not just some blowhard on YouTube, <laughs> or maybe I am. Anyways, um, so today I want to show you the difference between some amplifiers and the purpose for this video, just in case you're not clear, is to sell you the amplifier that I bring into the United States. And the reason why I do it is because I think it's a stronger value uh, by far and equal quality than what we have here that I feel are the overpriced brands. And so I am going to compare the audio analog Donizetti Anniversary 250 watt per channel Class AB Monster versus Viola Labs Class AB uh, Cadence Amplifier, which is a $35,000 amplifier. Here we go. You can see it right over here. The audio analog Donizetti. I mean, look at the size of that box. I mean, it's massive. Here's the, the, the big uh, speakers coming next, the Fisher and Fishers. But here's your typical DAC box, you know, or something like that. Um, you can see the audio analog is a monster. It is a very big Class AB amp. You can see I'll put my foot on it. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to give it scale. I can see it here. It looks a lot bigger than it probably does in this video. But I'm going to unpack it now and put it in the rig. So hold on. Hey, everybody. I'm ready to open the box. I've got my opening gloves on so I can handle... Look, I'm going to tell you something right now. If your damn gear needs little white gloves to take out of the box, that is some lame-ass shit, okay? If your gear can't handle rare, rare naked hands, then what kind of gear is it anyways? All right, let's go. Let's hit it. Here we go. I'm going to do the unboxing. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I'm sliding my knife through the thing. I, I, you know, I'm making fun of this because I think it's stupid shit that people that, oh, look, I'm cracking the box. I'm, I'm cutting the tape. Do you guys actually get off on that? I mean, in the comments below, you know, what kind of, what, do you actually need this kind of bullshit to see this boxing? I'm going to show it to you anyways because everybody says they love the unboxing. So here we go. Taking out this more styrofoam. Now look, ooh, look at that. This is pretty cool. Maybe I can show you guys this. Turn it like this. Audio analog sound pleasure. Audio analog sound pleasure. It's got this nice bag on it. It's got, comes with a power cord. It's not a cheap molded power cord. Comes with an owner's manual. How about that? Um, anyways, so. Let's get this bitch into the room and play it. I see one more view before I pull it. It hasn't even been touched yet. It's still in the box. I haven't even put my, look, ooh, it's not, not virgin anymore. It's got a fingerprint. Anyways, okay, so we're pulling it out. We're going to throw this baby into the system. Let's see what she's made of, man. Look at those heat sinks. This thing's ready to rock. I'll tell you that much. We got some serious V12 Italian power under the hood right here. So hold on. Also, did I hear that maybe y'all like to see people lift shit out of boxes? Okay, well, here it goes. And look at those little buggy whip arms. I'm not even a strong guy. It's not that heavy. It is heavy, though. Here we go. So here we come at first glance. You get a look at the comparison between these two amplifiers. Uh, you can see it looks like Donizetti is probably just a little bit taller, but they're basically about the same size. The difference, though, is inside the Donizetti, we're filled with guts. Um, inside the Viola Lab, we're filled with guts and heat sinks. With these open like this, they're more efficient heat sinks than containing them, in my opinion, than containing them inside a box with just some slots on top. You get much better cooling, in my opinion, from what seems to make physical sense from having heat sinks on the outside. It's simply a different look. Now, this chassis here, we've got heat sinks. These are aluminum heat sinks that are bolted onto the boards, and this is a steel plate um, top. Uh, this amplifier here, the Viola Labs, 
is um, uh, all aluminum plate. Um, this is probably sheet metal that's punched. This is probably machined aluminum, I would guess, um, because it is pretty thick. Now you can look at the face plate of uh, the, the Viola Labs versus the face plate of this uh, audio analog. The audio analog has a thicker aluminum face, face plate, so it's heavier duty on the face panel. Um, whatever that means, I don't know that it's necessarily significant, but it's just something to note. Um, and then if we go to the back, we've got, this is a differential amplifier. Both of them actually are differentials. Um, so balance, that means these are both balanced amplifiers. They have two amps on each side, uh, uh, one for, uh, because one carries the negative phase, one carries the positive phase. Both of these are like that. I'm going to open them up now so we can take a quick peek and compare the two. Hold on. So a few a few things to notice that I wouldn't be doing my job right if I didn't point it out to you. Okay, so you see this is um, sheet metal that is stamped sheet metal and it's painted with that like speckle, sparkle, you know, nice uh, textured kind of a finish. It's a hard coat. Um, but see how the screws have button head um, uh, screws on them? They're stainless steel button heads, um, which are nice. But they're not as expensive as flatheads with countersunk, you know, countersunk flatheads. Okay, so this is the difference between a $35,000 amp and a $14,000 amp. So th that would be a difference. That that costs more. It costs more to do it this way, right? So if you, if you and, and that's what you get. You'd expect for thirty five dollars you would have um, uh, a more expensive fit and finish. And this is a more expensive fit and finish. Torx, uh, drive black oxide screws um, inside countersunk holes on an aluminum plate, whereas these are stainless steel button head uh, hex drive um, on uh, sheet metal. So I will go ahead and uh, remove these and let's take a look inside. Maybe I better turn the power off first. Shan't I? Yeah, and I'll unplug it. All right, guys. And keep in mind, if you ever do this, first of all, I don't suggest you do it at home, but the capacitors in here will hold a charge that'll set you on your ass, even if you have the uh, power cord unplugged. So just a note to self, do not do this unless you know what the hell you're doing. So hold on. Okay, so now we have both of these amplifiers. I have removed the screws. First of all, you can see from the pile here, there's 26 screws. Um, on this one, so look, pile of screws to hold the top on, pile of screws to hold the top on. So one, this is more heavy duty fastening than this is, okay? So yes, you do get more for 35 grand versus 14 grand, okay? So just showing you that. Okay, a nice feature of this manufacturing is that this front face plate is slotted. So that means I have to pull this front panel out. It slides into a slot in the front face panel to keep it solid when you press it. Um, this is a nice feature on a piece of sheet metal, uh, uh, a lid. A lot of times they'll just place it like this and then it doesn't have the structural integrity and you have a crack right there. This slides into the front panel. So that is a little extra feature that's pretty nice. But you can see it's sheet metal. Okay, see on the edge? It's not, it's not all that thick, okay? Now, as a comparison, we will grab the... Um, this piece, okay, from, and look at the edge here, right here, and you can see, look at the two edges, right? So one is thicker, okay? So it's a thicker, more robust front uh, uh, top lid on the $35,000 Viola Labs. As you would expect, you hope you get more. So you get more um, in the metal work, right? You get a more elaborate metal work, um, and, uh, and you can see the difference with the audio analog. Now, as we look inside, um, you can, we're going to compare these two, and this is where they get much more similar and then in some ways different. Okay, so here I am with the ruler. We can see these are four and a half inches tall. That's the transformers. Actually, there's two things here. On this unit, one is a choke, an input choke. One is uh, a power supply input choke. This is a uh, the transformer for the... Uh, for the power transformer. So we've got a choke and a transformer on that piece. And then we've got one amp on this side, one amp on that side. Um, each one is differential. There's actually positive phase, negative phase on each amp. So it's very easy to see that this is a push-pull um, balanced amplifier by how it's set up. But then you can also see on the audio analog, we also have um, a differential amp 
where we've got the top amp up here. And then on the bottom, we've got a mirror of what's up here on the top. So we've got this and then down on the bottom, flipped upside down is the negative phase. So we've got positive phase and negative phase of the amplifier on a board. You can see right there, six output devices. So it appears as though there's 12 output de devices per channel, 20 output devices per channel versus a dozen output devices per channel. And again, they could be, um, some could be bigger, whatever. I don't know um, the spec. I can't see the numbers off these to give you a specification, but that gives us a general idea. Even though this is rated at uh, 200 watts, this one is rated at 250. Now you can see that there's one transformer, uh, out, there's one power transformer, one choke, okay? In here, it's a dual mono uh, uh, setup here. These are, let me get a... Um, these are about three and a half. Let's see, is that right? Looks like we've got about, yeah, about three, three and a half. So these are an inch taller um, and they're bigger, you can see. Okay, so you got um, almost seven inches and here we've got seven and a half inches. So they're bigger transformers that now, it would make sense that this would be a bigger transformer because this transformer is for both channels. Okay, and then this is an input choke, whereas here we've got this one transformer per each channel. Okay, so these two would be equivalent of one of those. So we have 1.2 kVA per transformer. So per board, it each gets a 1.2 kVA transformer. So we would want this to be at least double um, and I'll see if I can read the label off it. Okay, so I can see where the sticker is on the side, but I cannot read it. Um, so I can't get a read for how big that power that that transformer is. Um, it's relatively it's big. Okay, so we can say that. Um, is it uh, 2.4 kVA? I don't think it would be. Maybe it is. Um, but either way. In the Viola Labs, we're sharing a power transformer between both channels. And over here, we have dual mono power transformers for whatever that's worth. Okay, if we look at the filter capacitors, we see 10 filter caps down here. They are um, high quality Epcos filter caps. They are uh, computer grade, just like the ones here are computer grade. You can see they're 105C uh, Celsius. We have 10 caps here that are 2200 UF. So we've got 22,000 UF of filter um, per side on the filter bank down here. We've got 10 that are 4,700 UF. So we've got more capacitance in the audio analog. Now, my guess is somehow the choke filter on that input um, maybe offsets the need for capacitance. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not a, a circuit designer, but I'm just going over some of the basics that we can see. Clearly, as we look at this, this one is more robust and more of a custom build. You can see there's custom parts, things like this that hold the um, the heat sink, that, that transfer to the heat sink for those uh, output devices. That is probably not something that was, uh, they probably had to have that extrusion made. Maybe not. Maybe it exists. I don't know. It looks pretty cool. Maybe that's something that's provided. But over here, it's a little more rudimentary. Um, I hope you remember the uh, Constellation power amp. Uh, that I showed you because this looks a lot more like the Constellation, which was $55,000 for a damn stereo amp um, and looks amazingly similar to this audio analog at $14,000. The output wiring here is solid silver. This is solid core silver. So it's basically like bus bar going over to the outputs. Um, on here, we've got some heavy gauge. Looks like that is the output. Well, no, the output is... There is no output wiring. Its output comes straight through this board here. As you can see, we've got the outputs right down there, um, and they come straight off this board. So, you know, it's a trace, or it's probably a pretty damn heavy trace. Anyway, so those are kind of the difference. You see a little bit, see the, um, the, the edges are a little more contoured on this build. Um, it's a recessed machined uh, lid here. Um, this is a simpler build. It's bent sheet metal at the back. Okay, so it's just basically, you can see one, what, what you get for 35K. You get more um, in, in the, the mechanical build of it. But really, the bottom line is, what do these things sound like? 
that's where the rubber hits the road. And I know you guys want to hear what the difference is between these two. So let's put them up against each other and let them duke it out. And let's see how they fare. <laughs> 